my codependency in a relationship with a borderline. My name is Jared Mello, and this is Mello Mentoring. Please do forgive my little absence here. My mental health was kind of getting the best of me. I was a little more depressed and not quite as motivated as I would like to be. And um, I just wasn't getting some oomph. And so I fell into a little bit of a rut. But here I am, again, back on the other side. And that's just kind of how things go for me usually. I'll be pretty good for a while. But once in a while, I'll kind of need like, to take a step back. Like depression can also sometimes be referred to as deep rest. And I think that's kind of sometimes what I do. I'll go all out for a while, and then I'll need a, a little bit of a break. But also, I'd like to still promote my book, Radical Self-Respect, Avoid Falling for the Same BS. That book is great for people who have struggled with codependency, such as myself, people-pleasing, uh, weak boundaries, etc., or negative mindsets. That book is great for anyone who has struggled with those things. Now, to clarify... It's about practicing radical self-respect because I can know the material, but sometimes it can still be difficult. And that's part of what I'm going to talk about today in today's video. So in my relationship with the borderline, I certainly, when I begin to care, I have codependent type traits and I want to describe what they look like and some of the other toxic traits that I have because I listened to the video I did the other day about the borderline and it only paints one side of it, and I don't think I emphasized enough my part. And I think it's something that we all need to go over in our own heads when we've had a relationship with someone. We don't want to just, oh, it's just all the other person, because it's not all the other person. Even if that other person is toxic, the it takes two to tango, and we often attract similar to what we are. So chances are we're not innocent. We are certainly have some guilt and we have to take responsibility for that and our part in things. And one of the things that happens to me in relationships is when I begin to care, I'll start overthinking and analyzing everything I might say to someone. And it's no longer natural. And it's because for me, and I have borderline and narcissistic traits myself, I should admit that too. But when I begin to care, it's like my... I have an external locus of control and how the person that I begin to care about sees me is often how I can see me. I try my best to practice radical self-respect, but I've only been able to do it when I remain emotionally independent completely. It's very difficult for me to care and remain emotionally independent. And there's certain reasons for that. Like I feel like to remain emotionally independent, I have to maintain a strict schedule of how often I see someone, my workout routine, my YouTube video routine, seeing other friends. And sometimes in relationships, those things can start to go one by one. And it's tough. And that is something I can struggle with. But I can't imagine like even like living together with someone one day, like I would really need to go out of my way to make sure that I still did a lot of things for myself because and maybe this is just my own mental illness or my own part, like in being a part borderline, etc. It's like when I care, it's overwhelming and it becomes huge. And so maybe I'm no longer good when I get into my codependent stuff. I am no longer good at being honest about what I'm thinking and feeling. Or I begin to walk on eggshells because I begin to hold things in and I don't share was exactly on my mind. But why don't I share? It's because I become fearful of reactions that I'll get. I don't want to get into fights all the time, so I won't share things. And then things will begin to build up in me. And then it'll have to come out in these kinds of conversations that are like an emotional dumping. Where it's like, these are all the things I was thinking and feeling. And then the other person tells me all the things they were thinking and feeling. And it's like a relief to share it all. But it's like, to get to that point is even the problem. Like I need to own more of my what I'm thinking and feeling. I need to own like what my boundaries are and stick to them. And don't and I can be judgmental too. Like when I'm trying to solve someone else's problems for them, like that's not my responsibility. 
And becoming addicted to someone else's problems is exactly what happens to people who struggle with codependency. They get obsessed. And then they begin to think about the other person's problems, even though it's not their responsibility to solve them. And I think it's what it really is. It's a buffer. It's a buffer to maybe not look at my own problems as much when I'm thinking about someone else's. Much more fun to solve someone else's problems than to look at my own problems, right? And so, like I said, I can certainly have some toxic traits as well. And I think one of the big things is recognizing them, recognizing them and taking ownership of them and admitting them because they can be hurtful to people. Absolutely. And in the situation with a borderline person, like they can do, they don't often, they can sometimes go split and not communicate. And I understand that about certain people. Like I understand the, what the illnesses are and what they do. I mean, it does make things difficult. And I just wanted to clarify in this video that there, I had a lot of, I had a lot to play in it too. Like I really cared about this person, loved this person. And like, I still do. I still do. And it's tough. It's tough because it's just tough. Uh, it's hard to really explain why, but I know my codependency most certainly gets in the way. And how to work on that is, like I said, maintain boundaries. Maintain my emotional independence. Um, if someone isn't going to work on themselves, I got to just walk away. Like, these are the things that I have to do for me. And like, but I, and then I get torn where I see memes like I saw the other day where it said everyone wants to be the sun in someone's life. But why not be the moon to shine on someone's life in their time of darkness? And I also, I gravitate to people that have problems and have darkness and have depression and have anxiety and have past addiction issues because I feel comfortable with them. I feel comfortable with people that have been like me. I feel comfortable with people that have that kind of mindset. And I feel like those are the kinds of people I can get really close to. And some maybe people who aren't or are like really healthy, I don't relate to them as much. I don't, we don't have that extra layer to go in. And I think this is something a lot of people struggle with too. It's people's past and people's demons. We relate to them. And especially things like addiction and mental illness, it changes our reality so much. And when we find someone that can actually relate and empathize and understand and sympathize with that, it's very attractive. It's very appealing. And it's like a magnet where it feels so good to be able to relate to people and have them understand what you're going through and have you understand what they're going through. But like I said, also, while I'm not being codependent, I can be cold. I can be cold and probably brutal in my, in how I talk to people. And like, I should probably, I need to work on also addressing my thoughts in a more loving and caring way. And it's like the old expression, brutally honest is still brutal. Like, I think I need to work on that. I need to work on luring someone getting them to come to the table and not judge them, not criticize them. And I think that's something my parents did to me a lot. And I'm trying to unlearn it. I'm trying to unlearn that and unlearn like the judgments and the shames that were passed down to me. But like, and try not to judge. Like even if there's something I think someone else is doing wrong, it's like nobody wants that from their partner. Like what I do want from a partner is someone that's going to, help me become the best version of myself, shine some lights on my blind spots and the areas that I struggle. And that's what I want my partners to do for me. I want them to point things out to me. I want them to say, hey, this is where I think you're messing up. And I'd love to be able to do that for my partner as well. And I think it takes both people to be constantly looking at themselves, trying to grow, trying to improve. And we both have to do it. And I think it's super important. So, and I think if when you do really care about someone, you stick it out. You do try to stick it out when another person is in a dark period. I know I would want someone to do that for me and I wouldn't necessarily like it, 
if I was just getting judged and criticized for my darkness either. So that's another thing that I think I've struggled with. I shouldn't be as judgmental and as critical about other people's darkness because I, I even know, I even know that they can't help how they became certain ways, right? Now, we could always try to do something for ourselves, but it's really hard. And so I, sh if anyone, should understand that it should be me. So these are the areas that I think I really do need to improve in. I recognize it, and sometimes I just don't see it. I don't see it until I kind of get away from a situation for a while, and then things seem to kind of fall into place. And then I begin to see things a little more clearly. And then I begin to see, like, my part in things, and the things I could have done better, and the things that I wish I could have done differently. And every relationship I have is a learning experience, and the growth is never end. Like, there's never going to be an ending to the growth. It continues. And so, I wanted to make this video just to clarify that yeah, I, I had a big part to play in the relationship I have with the BD, BPD person. I have a lot of toxicities, codependence, and judgments, and criticisms that probably weren't the best. And that they were not good of me. And I apologize for them. Because they're not, they're not good. And so I need to work on me. And perhaps I should spend less time worrying about what other people are doing and focus more on my faults and my mistakes because it's best if we look at ourselves first. Like they say, when we point the finger, there's four more pointing right back at us. And that's true. And I struggle with that too. So I need to remember that. I need to remember, work on myself. And if I am going to say something to someone, I need to do it in a more loving and caring way. And like I said, these are the issues that I've struggled with, the codependency stuff, the walking on eggshell stuff, criticisms, being uh, judgmental, not being loving and caring enough. These are all areas that I've struggled in. And I think I liked also like a, almost like a narcissistic supply of having someone care about me and how that made me feel. And how when I try to help someone in the situation, it would make me feel good. And I begin to like really relate and then care more that we had that kind of bond together so those are my thoughts and i think it's important to get both sides out and i thought that as i left it before that was really just one side and so that wasn't fair but this is to me the other side my part to play and for all of us out there who have had relationships with narcissists borderlines psychopaths very rarely is it just one person who's toxic. The other person healthy as can be. It's like, no. I think all too many people think that. But they forget to look at their side of the street. To look at where they went wrong in the relationship. And, like I said, they felt better. Those kinds of people feel better as the victim. They feel better as the person who can point their finger. And be judgmental and criticize. But when they do that... They really just don't get to look at their side. They forget to look at their side of the street, and they forget that's really the only thing they can change, is their side of the street. And so that was my purpose, my reasoning for making today's video, my side of the street, and trying to get it out there. So thanks for watching. Please leave a comment below on whether you uh, agree, disagree, or any experiences you've had that have been similar to this one. So with that, thank you for watching, and over and out.